The goal of today is to make, compare, and interpret data displays. And the way that you'll know you are successful is can you graphically represent data that you collected and critique the representation of others? So that data that you collected Monday, if you want to use your own data, I do have to approve it because some people just had strictly categorical data. Um, but otherwise, I do have data to provide you. So, I mean, if your data was all categorical, I do have some nice and nice data. I'm going to try and figure it out. All right, but that is an option if you want to use your own data. Um, so I am recording. I'll link it in today's slide. So in Schoology, you'll see August 12th. Click on it. There's the same slideshow that just houses everything that we do. And then, like I said, this new curriculum is mostly student-based. So yeah, I'll be doing some talking and some reinforcing, but not a whole lot. If you want to see me talking a lot, then I'll link some videos from last year on exactly how to make box plots. That seems to be the one that students struggle with the most today. Um, how to make histograms, how to make dot plots. So they're there. And of course you can still ask me questions anytime. But just, I'd rather you have them and not need them than need them and not have them. The papers that you're supposed to pick up as you walked in. One of them is your note sheet. So on the days that I was absent, I had to turn in your note sheet in Schoology. That's not something normal that I do, like when I'm here. The reason why I had to turn it in is so that I know like you got something done. All right. Um, normally the note sheets I usually check during the binder check. So save them in your three ring binder. That's why everything I give you is hole punch. If you don't have a three ring binder, you need to get one. It can be shared with another subject. I'm not going to like keep your binders overnight or anything, but they do need to be organized and be in order. So get a three ring binder. Questions on them. So I will like come around and make sure that you're working, that you're understanding everything, but I'm not necessarily checking this for points today. It will be part of your binder test, which will be the same time around the first unit test, and it will be for assessment points. Doing the things we do in class, taking notes, is worth assessment points. Um, the other paper that you picked up is your practice. So instead of a puzzle piece practice, it will be on paper. My first hour didn't have time for it today because they had a fire drill yesterday. So we'll see how long it takes this class. And that's probably how long it'll take the rest of my class. Too. Um, it's only six questions. Some of them are even multiple choice. And the way that I grade your practice is based on work shown and completion, because I do provide the answer piece, so they should be correct. But I need to see that you worked out the problems yourself and that you did all the problems. These, I normally check in class, like I'll walk around one time with my clipboard, and then you only have to upload these to Schoology if you're absent or if you didn't get full points the day that I checked it. So not all the time do I make you upload stuff to Schoology, but I, if I check it in class, I just check it the one time. I don't continue to keep checking. So if you're late, whatever, on it, turn it into Schoology for those points. And then, yeah, here's some upcoming deadlines. I don't know why I put 19, but it's just meant to put 29 for the binder check. But here are some upcoming deadlines. They probably will change. So just if you're ever concerned, check it. Um, and nothing should be like a big surprise. Questions on procedures? All right. So then we have a gallery of data is our lesson today. We're going to make, compare, and interpret data displays. But first, we're going to start with the warm up. And we're still kind of establishing objectives, or not objectives, procedures and expectations. So I'm kind of training you to know how to do these. And from now on, if there is a warm up that we're doing, I'm going to have it projected when you walk in. And you just kind of walk in and start. 
Lately, I've been projecting the seating chart because we're still establishing where we're supposed to be. But from now on, it'll be a warm up if we're doing a warm up that day. And on your note sheet, there's going to be a spot where you can respond to a warm up. So, first, without discussing, yeah, I'll give you time to discuss just on your own. Look at these two dot plots, they're not on your paper. So the dot plots represent the distribution of the amount of tips and dollars left at two different restaurants on the same night. What do you notice and what do you wonder? You'll put what you notice and what you wonder on your paper. But the image is on the screen. So just quiet thing time, no talking. Write down some things that you notice and some things that you wonder. What about the shapes of the distributions? Do you notice anything there? Are they the same shape? Are they different shapes? They have the same distribution shape, I'll add. Anything else you notice now? What's the most frequent value in each dot plot? What's the fre most frequent value in the first dot plot? Four. What about in the second? What would happen if I were to add seven to each number on the first dot plot? That would be the new minimum. What if I take each of these numbers and add seven to them? What happens? Anything you're noticing now? Yes. They would become the exact same dot plot. All right. So it looks like the only thing different between them is just the number, which someone already mentioned that they noticed. Good. Um, what are some things that you wonder about? Anything? It doesn't necessarily have to be math related. Um, and I think you're in the wrong table. Because it's Landon, right? We're supposed to be in that front table. You guys are like all like not in the right spot. So like that whole group of four should be in the this back table and you three should be in that front table. I won't make you move now. No. But just tomorrow be in your right spot. Or maybe not all of you are in the wrong spot, but Landon, you're definitely supposed to be in that front table. And then Aiden, you're definitely supposed to be in that back table. Yeah, I think it's just you two that are quick. All right. Anyway, what are some things that you wonder, Landon? Why does the second restaurant have higher tips? Anything else that we notice? Or, or wonder, I mean, anything else that we're wondering? No, that's the only thing we wonder about. Yes, Landon? Why did they give the same amount of tips? So why maybe is the shape of distribution the same? So that's the same thing you said, just differently said and more specific. So like, why did they have the same number of tips? Why did the tips fall in the same exact shape? All right, good. Any other things that we want to add to this list? Earlier, someone said, did the second restaurant have better service? And maybe that's why that they're tipping more. 
Maybe that um, you're wondering if they just have different prices. Because how much are you supposed to tip of your bill? Five percent. Twenty percent. Fifteen to twenty percent, not ten percent. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That is the standard. If you have great service, 20%. If you have average service, 15%. Questions on that? But of course, not everyone adheres to that. So that's why we maybe have some that are really low. All right, good. So other things that you notice and wonder that just kind of prepped us for what we're about to do next. What you are doing today is creating a dot plot, histogram, and box plot to display the distribution of the data. And then you will write three comments that interpret that data. So on your note page, you all have sections to put your drawings, but you're going to be working together to make sure that they are accurate. Um, I'm gonna distribute some data if you want to use your own data that you collected, you have to get it approved by me. So I'm gonna just give you that data now. Good. I'm gonna literally just Google a histogram example, images. Let's see. <laughs> All right, and here's a good example. All right, don't talk while I am talking. Please and thank you. A lot of you had questions on this. Histograms should be intervals, and those intervals should be even intervals. So like zero through 10, it appears that there is one person or one data point that fell between zero and 10. In this one, it looks like there's four data points that fall between 11 and 20. So you count up how many times something falls in that data range and you make your graph based on that. Make sense? I shouldn't be able to see each individual value for those. Um, other ones that you guys had questions on, the box plots. You need your five needed values. Once you know what those five needed values are in your data, by the way, here's the list again for your five needed values. Upper extreme just means maximum. Um, lower extreme just means minimum. But then once you find them, you put dots on those five values. The three dots in the middle get lines and they make up your box. The other dots make up your whiskers once you connect it to the box. Make sense? So then based on that clarification, do you need a little bit more time? Yes. How much time do you need? Yes. 10. Even no, we're not giving you 10. I'm going to give you five minutes. The dot plot should be done. I hope at least. But look, here's a great example. The intervals on the bottom, or like the way that they counted their tick marks, are appropriate. They make sense. If their data goes from four to 10, then you need to make sure that your numbers, it's probably best to count by one. If my data goes from like, two to 30, maybe I'll count by two or five or whatever, but it needs to be consistent. It needs to be even. Here are some other ones. Good, I like it when it's also a little bit wider too. So a little bit outside of the data range. Not everyone had the same data. So keep that in mind. Some people had like, 200, 250, 300. I'm assuming this is 350. Kind of gotten a little lost. Just make sure that they're even inter even intervals, guys. Um, here's a pretty one. Except for, hold on. 
that are these tick marks numbered evenly? We go from 5, 10, 12, 15. So maybe next time consider like doing um by fives and then the 12 would be like in between the 10 and the 15, make sense? All right, but good. Um, good. Good, this one counted by ones. This one looks like they counted See, this one's off, isn't it? We would need a 150 tick mark here, even if there's no dots on it, right? But we get it, we get the point, right? Like we need a 350, a 400, a 450. Good, thank you. Now, next thing you're going to draw is your histogram, best you can. I wanna see at least one beautiful histogram come out of this. All right, so just from my sneak peek, I can see we need more help with histograms. So say that this is my data. By the way, this is posted in Schoology. If you need to go back and revisit um, the unit one, lesson two video and notes. All right, but say that this is my data. If I have to make a histogram, first I need to figure out what intervals I wanted to use. And in this one, they have intervals that overlap which is okay sometimes. In this activity, it is because if I have 40 through like 49.9 or something like that, then it goes in this category. But if I have 50 exactly, then it goes in the next one. Does that make sense? Yeah. So in this case, I ended up, or if you just count how often it occurs in your data, so like only one data point falls from 40 to 50. Uh, only four data points fall from 50 to 50 and so on to make a frequency table. And then what you end up creating is a histogram. Here's what it looks like if you want it to be um, where your intervals overlap. All right, but other things that I've seen that I honestly actually prefer is when they're just like, explicitly set like 40 through 49, 50 through 59, 60 through 69. But either way, you should have intervals for each bar. Make sense? Okay. Um, Try your best to draw me your box plot real quick. Super quick. On your... What numbers do you need for to make your box plot? In the your maximum, your minimum, your median, what else? Quarter yeah. um, one and quarter three. Quarter one, quartile one, quartile three. Once you have identified these values within your data, first of all, figure out what number line is appropriate. Maybe it's something like this. But then you find whatever values these are on your number line and you put dots there. You should have five dots to start out with. Your middle three dots get bars and that makes your box. And then the, they connect to your whisker. So don't lose your notes, we'll finish on Monday. Yeah. 